Star Wars The Bad Batch gets therapized. If you love somebody who displays traits of neurodivergence, or they might be on the spectrum, or if you are such a person, how can we build bridges of understanding and connection? Mended Light. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I love Star Wars. Star Wars to me is like pizza, right? You ever have pizza? Like even when it's not that good, it's still pizza. And you're like, still eating it. That's how I feel about Star Wars. Sometimes it's immaculate, sometimes it's eh. But I'll tell you, the animated series, if it's an animated Star Wars series and Dave Filoni is in charge of it, it's gonna be fantastic. And the Bad Batch is no exception. The Bad Batch follows a group of clones immediately after the rise of the Empire. Now these clones have been specially designed genetically to have unique gifts and talents. One of them, Tech, is incredible with machines, hence the name. But he is, as a lot of people have commented online, someone who struggles to connect emotionally with others. He sees the world extremely logically and rationally. And some say that he's coded autistic or some other you know, variation of neurodivergence. Omega is a little girl clone. Uh, you know, they've altered the DNA, so male to female, little girl clone who joins the Bad Batch and they take her on as like surrogate fathers and brothers. And several members of their team are now gone. They've gone off on other missions. One has rebelled and joined the Empire. And she is mourning. And Tech is not, she's not really connecting with him on this like she wants to. He's not here. He's, he's not with us. We're supposed to be a squad. This squad existed before Echo was a part of it, and it will exist after. <laughs> what is your issue? I'll make it. I want to be alone. I merely stated the truth. She already knows the truth. That's why she's upset. Tech. The squad existed before Echo was with us. It's going to continue existing now that he's gone. What's your issue? <laughs> it's like if a family member dies and it's like, yeah, but you know, this family was here before they were born, right? Yeah, no biggie. <laughs> but he's, he's just approaching this extremely logically and Hunter points out that's why she's upset. She already knows. You're telling her facts. She's aware of the facts. That's why she's hurting. And when Hunter puts it to him like this, Tech understands that he has caused Omega pain. Now this is crucial for those who are not neurodivergent or on the spectrum. Sometimes it feels like the, these people in our lives don't feel, don't care, but they do. And you could tell because Tech immediately gets up and goes after her looking to repair the damage. Tick. Hang on. And I love that he just jumps. He doesn't know what's down there, but without a second thought, this person who's really logical and rational, because he cares so much about her, just jumps down into the cavern. Fortunately, they land in some water. Whew. And then they have one of the most beautifully written scenes I've ever seen on the subject of neurodivergence. We will be out of this cavern in short order once they arrive with the mineral. Except we still don't have the marauder. Which is their We're ship. way off this planet, and we can't contact Echo for help. We do not need help. We will figure out a solution. Everything is changing, and you don't even care. I am not sure how I should care about change. It is a fundamental part of life. Echo left. Why doesn't that bother you? I... I am aware that you miss him, <laughs> but we have to adapt and move on. That is what soldiers do. We are more than that. We are a family, aren't we? Well, I... Uh, yes. Yes, of course we are. Then why don't you act like it? <sighs> I 
Echo chose a different path, as did Crosshair. I have to respect their decision. Even though it can be difficult to understand, we must carry on. I may process moments and thoughts differently, but it does not mean that I feel any less than you. I may process moments and thoughts differently, but that doesn't mean I feel any less than you. I pay attention to the Star Wars chatter online, and so many people said, yes, I feel so seen. Because in social situations or in emotional situations, I know how I process, I know how I think, I know how I feel, but I have a hard time relating to what the other person is going through, right? I'm not sure how I should feel about change. I'm aware that you miss him. To others who don't know what to look for, it can feel robotic, it can feel detached. But this line, just because I process differently doesn't mean I feel any less than you do, is so crucial because these people, they value their relationships, they value their connections, they value their family. But how they speak and how they think is neurodivergent, right? That's where that, that's where that phrase comes from. And it's important to recognize the signs of love that are shown, even if they're not shown in a way that another person would expect them to be shown, right? The tech doesn't put his arm around Echo. Quick insert, I think I said that tech doesn't put his arm around Echo. I meant Omega. I got the names mixed up. I do that with my own kids, much less a bunch of clones, okay? Cut me some slack. And now we return you to our regular scheduled program. He doesn't wipe her tears. He doesn't, you know, all sorts of things that, that Hunter might do or that Wrecker might do. But he goes after her, right? After he hurts her feelings, he goes after her. When she falls down through the, through the cracks, he jumps in after her. And he does his best to comfort her. And it's so crucial if you are neurodivergent, to be able to speak some, something like this to those who are struggling to understand. And for those who are struggling to understand, to see this example of shared humanity. The Tech and Omega become real close friends after this and they have such a meaningful, just little conversation that I love. What is it? The Empire is not the only threat. We've seen so many in the galaxy like Mako. Unfortunately, yes. However, there are many like us out there as well. And that is something. <laughs> there are many out there like us, good people trying to make a difference. I love the sweet little bond between them, especially when he gives her flying lessons. More flying lessons. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tech's got his hands full. <laughs> up, 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 Omega, pull up. <laughs> Copy that. Rare moment of panic there from Tech. <laughs> oh, I'm getting better, right? The collision alarms haven't gone off once. Because it shorted out during your last lesson. But thanks to my excellent instruction and ability to think clearly in stressful situations, you are indeed improving. <laughs> so what's next? I love that he gives himself all the credit and she just lets it slide. She's like, that's just, that's just tech. One thing I've noticed in my associations and interactions with neurodivergent people, people on the spectrum, is that if you drop expectations of what you think should be, and meet them where they are, there's often a wonderful sense of humor and playfulness and spirit of adventure there. And you just have to be willing to see it, right? Because he's not there next to her going, yee-haw, or woo-hoo, or you know, like a lot of these things that other characters might do, but he is enjoying himself and she sees it and they're connecting and it's beautiful. And then Star Wars giveth, Star Wars taketh away, spoiler alert. Star Wars has the best sound design. I mean, come on. Echo, now. 
just gotta get their cable car moving so they can escape the danger. And that's what he was up there doing, trying to get them moving again. Oh man. No es bueno. Es muy malo. And then as you can see, their car gets moving because he did that and he just saved them all. Tech gives his life, breaks Omega's heart that he does it, but he saves their lives. People in our lives who seem a little different when it comes to social situations, emotion, interaction, what are the rules of engagement, how they approach life, they seem a little different to a lot of us. But to people like them, it's completely rational, logical, makes perfect sense. The important thing is to recognize you're still dealing with a person and it's hurtful, insensitive and naive to call or label a person who is neurodivergent a robot, an uncaring, unfeeling robot. As we see with Tech, yes, he's a fictional character, but he's clearly modeled after real people that the writers know. He cares and he cares deeply and he loves and he enjoys life and he enjoys connection and he ultimately lays it down, lays down his life to save the people he cares about. We are now in the final season of Bad Batch and I am loving it, loving watching it with my kids. Question for you, who do you know that is on the spectrum or neurodivergent? And how have you come to understand where they're coming from better? Also, just wanna hear from you, what is your favorite Star Wars, right? Could be a film, could be a, one of the television series, but where do you think Star Wars peaks? What is it for you? I would love to read all those comments. All you Star Wars fans like me, I've got an entire series of videos about the galaxy far, far away for you to check out. Until next time, keep shining, folks. We need your light.